Hey taxpayers, it's Tiffany Gonzalez CPA here and in this video I want to talk to you about filing a tax return for a deceased loved one. Benjamin Franklin once said, there's only two things certain in this life and that's death and taxes. And unfortunately, when someone dies, you've got to deal with both. Even in death, the IRS obligations remain. Now, usually the person that files a tax return for the deceased person is their personal representative. This personal representative is typically named in a will. If they're not named in the will, they might be appointed by the court. The representative will then file the tax return in the same way that this deceased loved one would have filed the tax return had they been alive. So same exact 1040 with the typical income and expenses that incurred leading up to this person's death. Now, if the deceased person had a spouse, the spouse will typically file a joint tax return with them including but not limited to that particular year and the following. And they may even benefit from a qualifying widower status, assuming they meet the qualifications for that status. Income that the deceased person continues to earn after the fact, in other words, after they have passed, will typically go on a 1041 tax return, an estate or trust tax return. You don't need to submit a death certificate or any other proof of death with a tax return. In fact, the IRS and Social Security Administration has likely already received that information by the time the tax return is filed. I firsthand know that nobody wants to deal with taxes when a loved one passes, but it's an unfortunate reality that there is paperwork involved and this is one of them. We hope that this video brought you insight into the process. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook at Accounting to Scale. Until the next video, your favorite CPA, Tiffany Gonzalez.